Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Carlick with Flying and Eating. Today, let's go somewhere and do something. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hey guys, it's Adam here. On the previous episode of Flying and Eating, Jesse and I went up to Point Roberts, Washington, which is a weird little enclave of America only accessible by going through Canada. We spent a little bit of time in Canada, but not much after we returned to Seattle, but today is a brand new day. All right, now we are heading back to Canada after a night of rest and relaxation back in Seattle. We get around. Uh, but yes, anyway, today's goal. We're heading up to Vancouver once again. We're going to meet up with a buddy of mine named uh, Johnny, aka Happy Console Gamer, which I'm sure a bunch of you guys know. Um, it's funny, he and I have talked for years, but we've never actually met, and we're gonna have that chance today. Uh, we're also gonna get food, of course, and just go on adventures, and we're also gonna hit up a whole bunch of good, like, uh, well, uh, what's it called, Valley Village, Valley Village. Uh, which is the, the Canadian version of Savers, uh, which is like a Goodwill. Now, if you're in the US and you're like, I've seen Valley Village, Yes, you have, but you only ever see it near the border states, and the reason they do it is not for Americans. They do it for Canadians crossing the border wanting to buy American stuff, but they already know that brand, so just, just call it Value Village. That way they'll know what it is. Um, but anyway, yes, yeah, so we're going to hit up a bunch of those because we like killed it on some scores yesterday. So we're at Peace Arch State Park. Now, where I'm currently standing is the United States. Right here is the no-touching zone, and here is the Canadian border. This is actually one of the few spots on the border where you can actually just walk between the two where it's like kind of okay. Um, there's actually an arch over there we'll go to to show you that. But I mean, technically speaking, you can just do this. <laughs> so I'm going to go like, okay. All right, now I'm in Canada and he's in America. Now I'm back in America. And now, and now we're in two different countries, man. <laughs> <laughs> See how cool that is? Now obviously we're gonna legally clear customs and all that sort of stuff. We wouldn't really go beyond this point, but you can totally do it. It's just a interesting thing. So you just saw us cross the Canadian American border like four times on camera. Yeah. <laughs> So you leave the park out there, and you can head up this little walkway, and you'll see the arch. Now cars, of course, have to clear customs through here, and uh, we intend to head right over there to that white spot and uh, check that out. Because right there, the border runs right through that, right through the center. As you can see at the top, there's the flags, the Canadian side and the American side. Uh, just one of those neat little oddities that's really meant to symbolize the, uh, the unity of peace and friendship between the United States and Canada. It's very cool that despite you know, the, the world the way it is right now and borders being what they are, that this is still actually something that's cool enough that you can do. Uh, the fact that they actually still let you do this. Like technically, of course, you have to clear customs if you want to go any further than this. But the fact that even this is possible is just very neat. So right here you'll see these uh, boundary points that we talked about before. Now these are the original ones they put up. I mean, these might have been modified. Actually, yeah, they definitely have been modified. But right there on that side of the street is Canada. And you can see that it just kind of wanders up that hill and back over here and then it runs right through this building. By the way, for full name for people who don't know, Dominion of Canada is actually the full name, much like the United States of America. Yeah, Peace Arch is a big white building, obviously. Well, a literal arch that we just kind of enter here. May these gates never be closed. Park closed, thanks Canada. So as, it can, as you continue over to this side, the one thing you might notice is these aren't really a straight line. Like on a map, it obviously looks straight, but in reality, when they were setting them up, they were basically just guys, you know, with string and a vague guess, and they were just kind of throwing it out in what they assumed was a straight line. So as a result, it's all kinds of weird. So let's cross again. I'm still technically in the United States. Again, that side of those pillars is Canada. And it, it walks, it wanders all the way out here, out to the water, and of course that's the the edge of the Pacific here. But yeah, they were putting these out in like the 1840s, see? And they were just kind of roughly guessing where they all went. But right here, for an old train system, and it just kind of lets you know, you know, like all the, all the border points. And they are even marked all the way out here that this is the United States, and now I'm in Canada and basically just kind of ends, that's the border. All right, if you, if you look at a map of the US and Canada, and you follow that map, all, that huge line, all the way out to the end, right there, everybody, 
that's the end of the map. <laughs> so right here is one of those amusing little subtleties of where the border ends. You can see the American side and the Canadian side is just drawn in the grass because the Canadians took care of their side and the Americans are like, meh, whatever. But you see how it's like a squiggly <laughs> line like that? That's how inconsistent it is across the entire border. So these, these random little posts are basically markers to try and help you vaguely figure out where it is. But it's, it's kind of funny that they never bothered to like clean this up with modern technology. So now we're actually going to cross legitimately, if you will. Uh, and this, so this is the driveway point for the Peace Arch, uh, which is nice again to see during the day. Uh, so if you have the Nexus cards, of course you can use that. I do have one, but Jesse does not. So we got to use the old school lane, not a problem. But uh, we were just here. We were just here, yeah. And uh, now we're going to drive over it. So <laughs> then we can do the formal customs. It's kind of this interesting little neutral zone where both countries just kind of agree it's cool to we like. Just crossed. Yeah. And now we did. Now we're back in Canada again. Although, again, you're not really there until they say you're uh, authorized to be there. But, you know, technically, yes, you're illegally in the Dominion of Canada at this point. Um, but, uh, yeah, cool. So. We're gonna go ahead and get our stuff together, and I have to stop filming because border guards obviously don't don't like when you do this. But there you go. There's Canada. There's the border entry point for uh, Peace Arch, which today looks a little backed up, but not not awful. At Peace Arch, by the way, the Nexus Lane is all the way to the right. So I wish I could use you. Hi, little Nexus Lane. Miss you. And we've officially crossed. That's a really cool British Columbia sign right by there, by the way. Tricycle. The best place on earth. Yeah, I like that. But if you ever see it, like there's, if you're like, oh, actually, I, I give up. I want to go right back home. <laughs> you can do it right there. So I want to show you guys something a little weird about Canada. They have a pro Canadian content thing for non Canadian property. And it results in things like this, where the maple leaf is implanted into the McDonald's logo. You'll notice that in a lot of subtlety with a lot of American chains when they bring them up here They'll put the maple flag in there or something like that just to make it bizarre But I thought you guys might find that kind of amusing. So if you're ever in this area um, There's one city I would avoid. It's called Abbotsford It legitimately always smells like dog food the entire city We had a horrible time because of that It was disgusting um, aside from that, this area is very nice. I mean, what do you think? It um, looks very condensed. It's kind of like a spread out version of San Francisco. I can see that. But yeah, don't go to Abbotsford. Abbotsford's the only place ever that smells worse than San Francisco. So we got Adam Corlick over here. And you want to make a video? Um, no. No, neither do I. Alright, later. Bye. So we're here now, wandering around with Happy Console Gamer. And uh, we're gonna go get some food, and we're gonna look at random architecture. I like this thing, this like strange little open, yet leveled parking garage. Can I, is pretty... Can I tell you something? No, by all means, this is a travel channel, man. Perfect. This is where they filmed Rumble in the Bronx, the back alley. Really? <laughs> Jack Chan fought everybody underneath, right over here. So, this is more iconic. This is where they came all the way down, and this is where Jackie was in the building and he went around uh, the alley and so this is where all the punks came down and all that. They've ripped the other side of it so they used to go all the way down but they got rid of the other bridge that kind of went over so that's gone now but yeah the one cool thing around here is that Bumble in the Bronx was filmed here. A movie I absolutely really love. So I led Adam up the road he has no idea why we are here at this time of night he's like what, what are we doing and I said I have something nostalgic. I'm biting a cold, by the way, just so you, my voice is like this. But I want to show him something nostalgic. Right here, up there, 20, well, it'll be 21 years ago, pretty much now, that is where I first played Shenmue, in this old, cruddy apartment. Right here, it's like a one-bedroom apartment. It's really small. The biggest thing, I think, in the apartment was my TV, so I could play Shenmue. And when I came home, I came home in here, I ran up there, I turned it on and it completely changed my life. I mean, playing Shenmue for the first time was absolutely incredible. And it, it happened there and I just wanted to have a Shenmue moment with Adam right here and show him where I first played that game 21 years ago now. So we're just going to go to this paddle wheeler pub. It's not the best uh, pub in the entire world, but it's got really good food. And so you're not really going for, because it's a nice looking place or anything like that, you're going to get awesome food. That's the one thing I can guarantee. What, what do you recommend? Um, the burger. 
the burger. burger is okay. really, really good. All right, and I, the live music here. <laughs> I do like the live yeah, music. Yeah. I, I want you to prove me wrong on the burger because all the burgers I've ever had in Canada were always in Ontario. Okay. And I swear they taste like breakfast sausage patties. Oh, no, no. This, this okay, stuff, good. I really like good. the look of horror on your face. It means I can no, trust you. you can get some good hamburgers. Okay, here, good. Absolutely. Because I. I don't. And, and you can't stereotype um, like Canada. Oh, I know that. Routine. Yes. Talking about, oh my god. I've, I've had the same conversation. I've been to Montreal. I understand. Yeah, I get it. But, you know, like. People eat poutine, but it's like, it's not like a national food that everybody's eating all the time. I know. It's so stupid. Yeah, I, I'm with, it's, it's, it's like with us, like, every part of America is like, hey, we do pizza better, or we do this better, or we do that better, or whatever. But then you're like, you can't just assume all the country is like Texas or all the country is no, like is that's, like New York. That's so small minded, absolutely. Exactly. But what I'm saying, guys, is travel more, experience travel stuff, more. or watch me do it, and then you can see what to go check out. I'll filter out all the bad stuff for you. What I recommend is uh, the cheesy Captain uh, Bacon Burger here. Uh, six ounce uh, beef patty, two cheese slices. Uh, candy, 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 not candy, Canadian. Candy bacon. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, barbecue sauce, balsamic glazed onions, lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, mayo, fries. You know. I will do that. Sons, the devil's cucumbers. Don't like pickles, eh? Pickles. <laughs> did they? Did they do something bad to you when you were a child? They existed. They chose to exist. Yeah. Yes. I love pickles. I have no oh, pickles. you can have mine. What? No, no, I'm not having yours. Oh, Away with the cursed yeah, devil's yeah, yeah, cucumber. Yeah. I, I don't know what I'm gonna order myself. Okay, well take your time and we'll yeah, get back to that. You know what? I'm, no, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this. Probably the chicken wings. Okay. Because I've been going a little off the rails lately. I've been eating a lot of crappy food, so I'm just gonna have some wings. That's kind of a semi good thing. We can pretend it is because chicken. We can pretend it is because it's chicken. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll go with that. So I got my water, and I normally wouldn't bother with this, but the black coffee, and yes, I have to have black coffee all the time, they gave it to me in glass. I'm not sure I've ever seen that. And Johnny here got beer. I got beer, now, which I should not be doing because this is very fattening, but whatever. So what kind of... I, I never drink, so this is never really covered by me. I have to have other people do it. So it only comes out once a year, called Chestnut Ale. And is it Canadian specifically? Uh, yeah, it's from Whistler Creek Brewing, I think. And... Um, Robust and caramel, uh, crystal malt, skip the beer, and a deep amber hue, a warming appearance, while roasted chestnuts impart a bold, nutty character, complemented by a light level of hops for a clean, but crisp finish. All right, here's your sponsorship, Pony. All right, so what'd you get there? I got the Strongbow Apple Cider. And what do you think of it? It's delicious. It's okay. crispy. What do you think of it? I I'm not a cider guy, per se. Like, um, I just find it very strong and very tangy. It's, it's nice, but I mean, this one you know, have like one of. I didn't have like a six pack of cider. I spent a lot of time in Oregon, and cider is like the thing in Oregon. And uh, Marcus has introduced us to multiple different ciders. So. This stuff can get you absolutely wasted, though, yeah, right? That's why it. The hangovers, I mean, yeah. <laughs> when I was younger, it I drank. It sneaks up on you. Yeah, it does. <laughs> when I was younger with like some girls in high school, we would drink cider. I woke up with the biggest hangovers. I, I stopped after high school. I never drank it again. My burger has arrived. You got the exact same thing. You got the chicken wings. Very good. I'm glad I went with this. It's really awesome. It seems more, oh, you mean we talked about how healthy chicken wings are. But, but the thing is, 16 bucks for these is not worth it, right? Well, how much worth it? 16, 16 bucks. Oh, okay. Well, Canadian. Yeah, Canadian. Yeah, of course. Just making it clear to the audience. But that's about it. Very, very good. Very good. Very, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, very good. I want to see you. Give me this. Okay. Take a bite. <laughs> Take a bite. Come on, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, this. So I kind of, I wanted to double check to make sure none of the devil's cucumbers were in there. Seems like we're all right. All right. But we got cheese, we got bacon, we got sauces, we got all sorts of stuff. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you do it? It's good. There's something I can't, there's some kind of seasoning or something I can't put my finger on. But it's really good. It's sweet. It's like a mixture of sweet and spicy at the same time. I think mm -hmm. the caramelized onions, maybe? Maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like, I feel like it's something that's actually in the meat itself. Oh, yeah, it's balsamic glazed onions. That's probably what it is. Yeah. It's made nice. Quite yeah, nice. Very good. Let's take a look right there. Dun, Boom. dun, dun. Yeah. I've heard of you as cinematographer. 
<laughs> I like that burger. Can, that has redeemed Canada in making burgers. I just want you to know that. Okay, that's good. Because yeah. every burger I've ever had in this country, granted all East Coast, right. Ontario specifically, tastes like a breakfast sausage was the basis of the that's patty. So weird. It's I disgusting. Don't know where you're, I don't know what you're eating at. Harvey's. Oh, oh God. Well, that's that was an example. There's also a few others. I've been yeah. to others. But people, even ones like friends, local, have recommended. Yeah. Gross. This yeah. was good. So achievement unlocked. Is, is, is it the best hamburger ever? Oh, no, not the best hamburger ever. No, 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 I was about to say, not the best hamburger ever, but it's solid. It's good. It's, it's also, there's I can much. easily confidently say, the best burger in Canada really? that I've had. Well, that's saying something. <laughs> that's, that's a something. point, a technical yeah. point. Yeah. And that's a good thing. It's like a, a technical free throw in basketball. There, um, is, there is a place over here called Burger Heaven. And maybe they could win you over it maybe on this, but I mean next time next time on this trip yeah. But now it's time to dive into these fries. What do you think of your burger? Well, judging by what you just said I'm ready to see what other burgers are there that are less than this Okay, these fries Amazing. They're good, but I instantly recognize them. Oh, yeah. They are 1990s Burger King fries. Are they really? That's exactly, I mean, the fact that that could just jump back into my brain. Were they that salty back then? No, 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 they, they have this like, these rigid edges. I remember when Burger King introduced these. They were like, we're changing it up because they had been doing one formula and they changed. This is exactly what it's like and that's a good thing because they're actually really good. Johnny, I want to thank you very much for yeah. basically, uh, you know, hanging around with us and taking us out to get food. And it's been terrible, honestly. I know I'm we're the worst. All over. He was like, "Hey, wouldn't it be cool if we just went and had food and hung out with, like people?" Yeah. And you were like, "Film me the whole time." <laughs> no, he was he was a real sport about it, and I appreciate. No, it. it was great having you guys up. I'm glad you liked everything. I mean. Next time we'll find the ultimate burger for you. Well, we'll, you. we'll eat. Well, don't you worry. Like, yeah. I want, I want you to take, like, I want you to take us to some sort of Indian place or Middle Eastern place. Oh, that's, Canada does that so much, but oh, Middle my. Eastern especially. Yes. But I, I, you I, know, I as have someone, two places. Okay. Now here's the thing. You, well, I don't know why we keep continuing to walk, but we're just gonna keep doing it. As someone who, who apparently is, a, like a, you know, you've been to the UK, obviously. Yeah. yeah. You know the Indian food there is on a different level. Yeah. Absolutely different level. Now the U.S. can't even come close to competing. With Still, that. place, and I went there, and it's like the best of the best. And so, like, me and Kim always go there. So I'll take you guys there. It's the ultimate. It'll be a secret for now. For now. For now. Stay tuned. Eventually, yeah. we'll come back. This guy will be like, "Oh, I got some time off," and then we'll all show up and we'll yeah. go get Indian food. But again, Johnny, thank you very much. Thank for Thank you so much, us. yeah, for having me. And now we're gonna go find crap at stores. Look at that color. Now, Jesse, you may not know this, but because we're in Canada, they can only have red and white. So that is so that's, considered a maple sky. That's the maple sky right there. That's actually from a byproduct of all the syrup. So we just came out of uh, Value Village. Value. Sorry, we didn't really film enough footage of Value Villages. <laughs> um, but the Value Village we went to before, we killed it. Um, and today, we, we actually we went in. It was the same deal. We were like, man, they got nothing. This sucks. And then all of a sudden, boom, boom. pile of junk. Good junk. I got Good some junk. stuff too, but you know, you have to watch my other channel to find out what they are. So, yep. There's a uh, a store chain that probably had a hard time in the last couple of years. I, I'm not entirely certain why. I just have a feeling. So we've come here to Real Canadian Superstore uh, in search of candies and other sodas and types of things. For those who have never been, this is kind of like a, a Canadian Walmart, even though they do have Walmart here. Uh, this is like a very Canadian specific one. So when was the last time anybody out there saw Tang? I haven't seen this in years. So you got some of the more unique Kit Kats, classics. Uh, this would have been the, I don't even know, oh the Hazelnut Crunch, Cookie Crisp thing. Ooh, Caramel Crisp, I'm gonna have to grab a couple of those. But you got Caramel Burst Explosion. I think these are all the same. But uh, random other things. Canadian Smarties, Mars Bars, O Henry's, uh, co Coffee Crisp. Now, Coffee Crisp is a huge standard up here. However, a lot of people, of Americans in particular, avoid this thinking, oh, it must taste like coffee. It doesn't. It goes along with coffee like you dip it. But really, this is like a Kit Kat. This is really quite something. Um, I, like, I have a cousin who just absolutely hates coffee. And I tried to get him to eat this, and he just wouldn't touch it. And eventually I convinced him, so he tried it. He was like, best, best thing I ever had. I don't know why I fought you on that. Because it doesn't taste like coffee at all. It has nothing to do with coffee. we got a few other things, like a Mr. Big Bar. Those are good. Crunchies are good. They're kind of like, um, 
I don't even know how to do it. There's an Australian candy like that's very similar to this. Australians, you guys know what I'm talking about. Americans, I'm sorry. It's like a chocolate honeycomb type of thing. These are good. Um, there's like orange Kit Kats, caramilk, Jersey milk. So we're hanging out near the soups, like Campbell's soups. Now, they actually, surprisingly, have a lot of different flavors up here that we don't normally have. I had no choice. I, oh, not this one. I had to get this one. A butter chicken with vegetables. So that's like Indian butter chicken in the form of a soup. In a can. I'm doing it, man. It's coming <laughs> back with me. Yep. And he got, what'd you get? I got the, uh, the chicken all king. king. Yeah. So we found the Starbucks holiday fetus flavor coffee. Apparently it's made of Canadian children that taste like maple. This is Starbucks True North Blend Coffee. This this particular roast is only done in Canada. It's still just black coffee. It's good, but it's just, hey, technically you can only get it here. Van Hout is actually a Canadian brand, and Timothy's, as I understand it, is the fancy version of Tim Hortons. Oh. Like, McCafe is like the fancy McDonald's. That's the fancy Tim Hortons. I want At least that's Timothy's. what I would, Yeah. <laughs> The first time I heard that, I was like, what? <laughs> that sounds insane. But I don't actually know if it's true, but that's what I was told. I think it's kind of hilarious. Especially especially considering that Tim Hortons clearly has a presence here. <laughs> so here's the thing. This is actually the chemical ingredients necessary to end the universe. Uh, because Tim Hortons coffee is actually really, really bad. And instant coffee is even worse. So the idea of putting them together... I'm pretty sure this is, I mean, I'm pretty sure if you translate that in English is what it says is, this is how you destroy the universe is by making this. Uh, so don't, don't do this. Like in all fairness, like jokes aside, their bag coffee is actually really good. Surprisingly, I don't know why they don't just put this in their stores. That, that should not be a thing. I just want to take a second to say I appreciate that there actually is maple coffee. You can look at cereals and see some odd ones, like things being called shreddies instead of toasted meat wheats and all that. But you can also, apparently there's a lot more activity with Canadian cereal, because you can have, you know, raisin sex here. Oh man, I so want this, but there's no way. I just can't. But then you got like Kit Kat drumstick and Oreo drumsticks. An O. Henry drumstick. That's pretty cool, not gonna lie. Dude, Canada, this did not need to exist. What are you doing? Oh, hi, Mox. Look, guys, Toys R Us. It's still in Canada, remember? If you saw the Montreal video, you already know that. Okay, bye. So uh, when Rob and I, the evil Rob Thanos, were up in Montreal, we went to a local place uh, called the Wall Uh Here, it's a little different. It's actually called the Wall Art. The Wall Art. Uh, you know, regional accents, dialects, and all that. And apparently, this place is owned by George. Well, we've been in here for two seconds, and Wall Art has already amused us. That's right. The captain hopped the border. He is Canuck <laughs> Crunch now. You guys are a little too into the ketchup chips. The hell's the difference between ketchup and old-fashioned ketchup? What does that mean? So occasionally, Canada gets some potato chips really right. These are fantastic, the Magic Masala ones. But what the hell? So we totally wanted to go here, but the, there's just this ridiculously long line and we just don't have the time because we got to go home. But yeah, if you're ever up in Canada, it's a reminder, you can get Afghani food up here, which is kind of neat. But instead, we're going to go over and actually get some Indian food. There's Indian food is so common up here, there's actually like Indian fast food. So we're going to go try that and just see how that turns out. Okay, so this is cool. Basically, it's like an Indian burrito. It has this feel of like Subway. They gave me this chutney that they recommended, and I got masala fries, which are really good. And this was a big surprise. They have thumbs up. You guys might have seen this at the uh, World of Coke in Atlanta, but the color was wrong there, so I'm guessing the one in Atlanta was just bad. But this is a an, an legit Indian drink made by Coca-Cola, and uh, I'm looking forward to trying this, man. This cheers. Is a, yeah, cheers. I'm excited, dude. This is actually really, really cool. Guys, this is really, really good. Like, I want to curse and say, like, this is so, you know, extremely good, but wow. And the, that sauce, the, the chutney sauce that goes with these masala fries, it's fantastic. I would, actually, I would actually say the only part that's not, like, amazing, like, this is fine, but this, like, it's unfair that this does not exist in the U.S. I agree. I wish there was one so I can go to it every other day. So this was the sleeper hit that we were not expecting. Yeah. Freaking chutneys girl. Like we looked at it like fast food, you know, whatever, but this place is fantastic. Like I, I don't know if it's like a chain or if this is just like the only one or whatever, but 
is really good. It's uh, like a diamond in the rough. Dude, I mean, it. okay, by like high quality Indian food standards, I'm sure it doesn't really compete, but uh, Indian burrito, <laughs> and it was ridiculous. Yeah, Indian burrito is pretty amazing. Yeah, I was very, <laughs> my masala fries were good too, it was just too much food, but yeah. the, the, you know, the chutney they put it with, fantastic. Chutney is kind of like... The let's, sweet and delicious. Let's say like an Indian ketchup, let's put it that way. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is a term for a condiment, but they have a ton of different kinds, and this, this stuff's not bad. This is much better than it was when I had it in Atlanta. I think the machine down there was just broken or something. This is actually good. coca Cola is better. So we're about to go back across. I don't know, man. Do you think this store is trying to get my attention with its ridiculous sparkly light I... display here, duty no. free store? No, I don't think I don't think it's trying to get my attention. No, not at all. Anyway, this is the end of the Maple Empire, uh, and we are going to become free again soon. Obviously, we've been enslaved and in bondage, or we ba we barely escaped. Barely. The truth is, bar barely with escaped. With our lives, with our lives, uh, with our sanity, with our sanity, and Mapleism. Um, is that? Okay, and so yeah, we're we're gonna cross over the no touching zone in a second if we not already did it. Uh, and boom, America! But now we have to go through customs, so I gotta go. Good morning. Uh, it is time for me to go home. I'm currently at SeaTac Airport. Uh, technically, I'm at Arrivals, which is a little strange. We were driving in. Jesse was cool enough to drop me off, and there was a uh, it, the line specifically said outside. Don't go to departures, it's congested. Just use arrivals and then find your way like upstairs. Yeah, this is uh, this is John Riggs's airport. Shout out to him if he's watching. Uh, yeah, he loves going through here because he doesn't have a choice. Because the only airport, um, the, the only hub really here is uh, for Alaska Airlines. Uh, Seattle is surprisingly not that active. Uh, it's, I mean, it, obviously other airlines operate here, but the major one that functions here is Alaska Airlines. However, I'm not flying them, so it doesn't really matter. Just kind of interesting, but uh, there's a quick look at arrivals and uh, we will now wander on upstairs and get home. Ah, and get another airport where they have a weird tiny plane hanging down. Um, so SeaTac is kind of a strange airport uh, because as I said, it's not a hub for anybody except Alaska Airlines. So everybody else kind of gets shuttled into this one area, at least domestically. I've never flown out here internationally. But, uh, oh good, I was actually worried that the CTSA Pre, I was worried they didn't have clear, but they totally do. But once again, I want to remind people, if you're flying, take stuff out of your pockets and put it in your bag. It may surprise you to find that metal sets off a metal detector, but apparently a lot of people don't know that. Uh, Manchu Walk, which I don't really recommend, it's kind of like knockoff Panda Express, <laughs> but there's a few of those around. Actually, one thing that's kind of cool about this airport, so this is basically the closest major airport to Alaska that isn't part of Alaska, obviously. And as a result, there's a lot of like Alaskan themed restaurants, um, which is really just places to get big crabs and stuff like that. So thank you very much for watching this ridiculous journey through all these series of videos of the Pacific Northwest. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, please com like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on all the social media stuff. It's in the description, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, my main channel, all that sort of stuff. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all later.